Meyer Foundation and Connor B. Judge Foundation, this is Demystifying NMO. With support from Genentech. Welcome to Demystifying NMO. I'm host Chelsea Judge, and cheers to the finale of season two. Wow, I'm just so honored and privileged to be a part of this NMO and MOG community. We've really covered a lot in this past season. The most downloaded episode to date, including season one, has been vaccine preparedness in regards to the ongoing COVID pandemic. Um, And we did this back in December of 2020. And thank goodness that the vaccines have overall continued to hold up in protecting us against severe outcome and fatality. Very grateful for that. We also covered navigating and maintaining multiple types of relationships with NMO. We had Sumair Foundation ambassadors, Lexi Marta. Um, We also had Julie Aldridge and Kristen Hewitt to talk about how they work in managing their lives with NMO, um, again, at work or in their personal relationships, romantic relationships, in school, etc. So I think that's a really good episode as well. We talked about perspectives of identity and self living with NMO um, as females and males, respectively. So this was done by Chelsea Tucker and Dr. Kaplan, discussing clinical and personal considerations, navigating NMO as women, um, you know, the effects of treatments on the body, um, just getting the diagnosis and how that rocks your world and coping as a wife, as you know, a full-time mom in, in the workplace and just navigating who you are in this new lens or new new body. And then we have my brother on and for a very candid discussion on what it's like to be a dude with NMO, the rare of the rare. And I think that was one of the most special episodes that we've done today. And it has been one of the top five most downloaded of demystifying NMO. We've covered heat sensitivity on too hot to handle. And we even went over the latest in NMO SD research. This was another top listened to top downloaded episode. And this pulled research from ECDRMS, one of the hot conferences in MS or just greater neuroimmunology. And ultimately, I think the data set here was really reassuring with regards to the benefit safety profile of FDA approved treatments currently for adults with AQP4 positive NMOSD. We also discussed clinically clinical distinctions and overlaps of NMO and MOG, as well as nerve repair research. And we also got into the clinical diagnosis. So the most recent episodes, part one was the NMOSD clinical diagnosis covering the clinical characteristics, MRI, so that's imaging criteria, and di diagnosis of exclusion with a patient and clinical perspective from Dr. Joanna uh, Robles. And then part two, I was so grateful to have life coach and NMOSD patient Taylor Ann Macy to share her perspective and uh, professional experience on controlling what you can after the NMOSD diagnosis with particular focus on appreciation for mental health. Demystifying NMO works in concert with Ask the Experts, ABCs of NMO. This is collaborative. The real unique aspect of our podcast is that we provide a unique format of blending and bringing together a candid conversations featuring NMO patients, clinicians, and researchers. And with this really open, really vibe of the podcast in mind, please let us know what you most like and need to hear about, need to learn more about, or have open conversations about um, with the ongoing experts and just others like you in the NMOSD and greater MOG community. So reach out to us, uh, find us online at the Foundation.org and find us on social media at the Sumire Foundation. And now focusing to today's episode, the season finale. I am thrilled and honored to introduce and feature Nell Choi on our season two finale. Nell Choi is a 13 year old INMO NMOSD patient advocate after her intense diagnosis with NMO just a few years ago at the tender age of nine. Not only living some of the most terrifying NMO related symptoms, Nell decided to become a champion and inspiration for other children going through a mystery illness. She wrote a book, My Hospital Story, which tells her harrowing battle in the ICU with NMO. Nell is forthcoming about the raw emotions she faced and balances it all with optimism and humor. She continues to be a fierce NMO advocate, sharing her journey on CBS News and even meeting with President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden. She is quite literally an international NMOSD patient advocate and author. Wow. And now I share my conversation with Miss Choi. Um, so Nell, tell me in a scale of one to ten, 
Um, are you excited about this? Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, probably up at a 10. I'm like, this is just such an awesome opportunity. It goes both ways. I feel the same way. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on our pod on Demystifying NMO. You have a really unique perspective and journey, as all NMOSD patients do, but you you have some notable pearls, highlights, and experiences, so thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I always want to get into the heart of the matter, which is your personal NMOSD journey or story. Do you mind sharing what that looks like for you? Yeah, so um, I was first diagnosed when I was nine, and um, it was it was pretty scary because no one really knew what was going on, and I was so young then. And it it started after right after I got home from um, our winter break vacation in Colorado. We were skiing as a family, and right when I got back, I started developing really strange symptoms that were that kind of led us to thinking that it was the flu, but it of course wasn't. And so it went on for a few weeks before I actually got an MRI. And then that showed like all the inflammation that occurred in my brain. And so a lot of my time spent at the hospital was not even knowing what I had, as probably many NMO patients can relate to. <laughs> it was just incredible though. I'm so grateful that I got the treatment I needed eventually and that I was able to make a pretty um, remarkable turnaround. Now, wow, <laughs> there's a lot here and I wish I could hug you. As you're telling this, it's, I know, a very traumatic, tumultuous experience. Get, it's an upheaval. It changes your life and your family's life so suddenly. I know that personally from my brother's experience with NMO. Um, but at the same time, you carry it, like validate the valid of this is a tough experience, but you are so graceful in how you express yourself and, and also like the level of gratitude and optimism, I, no words. Um, and I just want our audience to know that as she's sharing her very personal NMO story, I can see cat ears appearing in her Zoom screen and it's, it's too precious really. So you said that your symptoms kind of mirrored the flu. So were you like really nauseated? Um, really dizzy too, um, just not having correct balance and really fatigued, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I applaud you and your family for kind of getting to the bottom of it pretty quickly as far as NMO goes. So it seems like it was a matter of weeks for something, for, for uh, a, a, a better diagnosis or a better explanation. Yeah, it definitely, and also um, it really helps that both my parents are physicians, and I I can't even imagine for those who aren't as familiar with the healthcare system how challenging that could have been for them. yeah. You are so wise. A similar situation for me, my family, my brother, when he was diagnosed, no one, no one in my family had medical or science background. I was just coincidentally doing my PhD in immunology at the time. So I could be kind of like a translator to ask the questions, to understand the treatment, et cetera, like your parents as clinicians could do for you. And my family and I are always saying how we are so grateful for our pooled resources, including education, insurance access, pushy parents, et cetera. But everyone deserves quality health care. Obviously, no one deserves NMO. Definitely. I just wanted to put into perspective more the numbers. NMO in itself is a very rare neuroimmune disorder. Pediatric M NMO is the rare of the rare. Pulling off of some stats from a recently published paper by um, Sylvia Tenenbaum and others in collaboration with the Guthy Jackson International Clinical Consortium, although NMOSD in pediatric patients is relatively infrequent, seems like pediatric onset NMO accounts for about three to 5% of all NMOSD cases. How do you look at that? What's your perspective? Yeah, that's a big question too. And something I've thought of, like just, that's been challenging throughout this whole experience because it does feel a little bit lonely at times for sure. Not really knowing what's gonna happen next. And with a lot of, information that's kind of confusing as a kid as well. It's hard to just navigate it all. 
And yeah, for me, I've found through finding the Smire Foundation and some amazing communities and resources, that's really been what's kind of helped me through this whole experience. That is one of the key positive elements I've heard from every everyone's NMO story is the patient community, the NMO community is amazing. It is. As a 13 year old living with NMO for about four years now, what would you tell yourself at your diagnosis that you know now? That's a really good question because there probably are a lot of things I could tell myself about what I've learned and gained throughout this whole journey. But I really think that I would tell myself to just know that this is happening for a reason because you're going to be met with so many gifts like the NMO community and um, being able to share your story with others and just finding, kind of finding yourself, I guess, through this whole experience. I think that was definitely a big thing for me. Wow. The level of introspection and gratitude that you demonstrate or just exude, I don't, again, I don't have words for, but I think the, what I really want to repeat, what resonates with me is that you said that you're going to find yourself in this. Yeah. And finding like those parts of you that really kind of matter, I guess, like what, what's meaningful to you really and what your core values are. And I think that wow what a time to share that message in the middle of an ongoing pandemic when i think a lot of us you know take nmo out of it but a lot of us are going through a lot of these big questions too and really truly finding ourselves in this adversity i think carrying on i think this weaves together right the message that you have from your traumatic and adversarial journey with nmo is the importance of storytelling in that in your patient advocacy you are already a published author with your book my hospital story about your nmo experience could you share a little bit about that this book itself actually served with a journal which is has has been since diagnosis one of the best ways i cope with living with this chronic illness and i really just wanted to build a community to help others feel less alone and to be able to find that appreciation and light from a dark time in their lives. And in the book, I share a lot of wisdom that I personally gained from going through this experience. And I think that going and through, through this process of writing the book, I kind of found my voice and wanted realized that we all have a power, the power to make an impact and that I could put my strengths to a good use to advocate for others with NMO. And girl, you're killing it, <laughs> which is, wow. You keep making me say wow. You also have taken your advocacy to world leaders and have brought NMOSD into everyone's living rooms. You were on CBS News, you met with the Bidens. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah, this opportunity happened with um, the hospital I go to. And it, it was just incredible because I felt that meeting such important leaders just, it, it felt like even this couldn't have happened if I didn't go through this experience. And it was just like, I don't know, some sort of thing waiting for me on the other side and a gift. And I felt that it was really cool because I was able to give a copy of my book to the Bidens and sharing my story with them. It just makes it all feel that much more like I've been seen and heard and it's incredible. You and your family were able to harness the resources, powers, innate talents, and also just tremendous grit to make it, to make the world a better place for not just you, but the greater communities. Thank you. What are your top hopes and aspirations for the NMOSD community? I definitely have quite a few. And of course, most obviously a cure for the sissies. Um, I think that's a hope that we can all share. But otherwise, I, I definitely want everyone's story to be heard. And I know everyone in the NMO community has a very unique story, but in a way, when you share your story, you're able to become more connected with others. And that's, I want everyone to feel the connection that I did 
whether by means of sharing your story through the foundation, through going to like one of the summits that like the Guthrie Jackson or the Smire Foundation has, or just having someone be there to listen. I think that putting yourself out there is just incredible and connecting with so many other inspirational people it can be really powerful. And, you know, the power of number, like when we all come together, we can be so much, so much stronger in pushing for patient advocacy or just feeling more included and connected. The power of perseverance and community and human connection and, and doing things for others in, in service. So you are one of my inspirational leaders. Um, I look forward to seeing more of the work that you do. You are a very well-rounded young woman. What do you do for fun? Oh, yeah. So I personally, I'm very like crafty and I'd love to work with my hands and do hands-on things. So I love art. It's probably one of my favorite things to do. I'll be drawing and doodling anywhere and anytime in my free time. I'd love to cook for others and that, I guess that's also part of my way of building community. I love to like bake and cook and do new recipes and stuff like that for other people. And those are probably my two favorite things to do in my free time. And of course, playing with my cats. Um, they're such my, they're definitely my emotional support. Mm -hmm. buddies, so. I love that. Well, thank you so much now. Um, this has been awesome and we look forward to further work with you, further insights and stories because we could dig into a lot more, but we really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me.